It's hurricane season 2022 and Acadian is on the hard in Grenada. I'm living aboard her in the yard and I'm making good progress for the upgrades we have planned for this season. In our last episode, I do extensive repairs by reinforcing the structure, reinstalling the foam, and then glassing the rudder. In this episode, we finally finish our rudder project by replacing and maintaining rudder bearings and putting the final touches on and reinstalling the rudder. Let's get to it. Hey, look at that. We finished the layup. Get the grinder out, just knock down the edges and a few rough spots, and then I'm going to let it sit and cure. A bit more shaping, maybe a little filler. Just about done with this rudder project. I'm so glad to be done with a big project. This was a big one. It took all the glass and all the resin. Like, I bought exactly enough. That's crazy. Here's the finished rudder. I've got a few low spots that I can probably put a little bit more filler in. You see the little shiny spots? But it's so minor. Uh, I'm probably not going to do that. To be honest with you, I'm really tired of sanding. Uh, <laughs> but here it is. Here's the rudder. It's hard as hell. Yeah. Nice and solid. Uh, so the next step is to take this dude and mount it in the hole over there that's on the boat. Before we do that though, we're gonna replace the bearings. I have to remove the old bearings. This bottom bearing, I believe, is either glassed or epoxied in place. There's a seam in it right here. So I'm gonna start at this seam. I'm just gonna try and push the bearing in and deform it, the shape of it, to where it's no longer round, to where I can pull it out. All right, there it is. Came right out. As soon as I broke the seal on the end, it just popped right out. All right, cool. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm cleaning up the surface area that the bearing sits in. Uh, you can see how there are a bunch of cracks. And I'm pretty certain they just put a thin layer of gel coat just to make sure that bearing fit nice and tightly in here. I'm going to replace this surface with just a two-part epoxy, just a West System 102-105 with a uh, 407 filler. It's a sandable filler, really tough, real dense sandable filler. Uh, so I've prepped the surface. I've taken all of the old gel coat off of this thing. That's our next step. Clean it, coat it, install bearing tight. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to replace that top bearing. Seems easy enough. Uh, that way when I shove the rudder up into here, up in through the, the post hole or whatever you wanna call it, the top bearing is replaced. So let's do that next. I'm gonna pull this bearing out. Looks like just a few set screws. One, two, three set screws around it. This should come right out, put the new one in, tighten the set screws, and the top bearing is replaced. Then we'll set the lower bearing once this is done. So let's go ahead and do this top bearing. All right, so the tool of choice is just something long enough to go up there and impact the bearing. So here we go, we're gonna use this piece of PVC pipe. I don't even think I need to um, use a hammer. All right, let's go up top and see if it moved at all. After further inspection, it's very apparent that if I want to get this bearing out, there's only one way to do that, and that would be to take a saw to it and cut it out. Not something I really want to do. I did beat on it just a little bit to see if I can pry it out, but that's not going to happen. This thing is epoxied in place. I mean, it is. It's in there. The manufacturer did not want this thing to be removed easily. Anyways, I mean, the thing appears to be in very good condition. It has an O-ring sealing surface that wasn't in the best shape, but I can easily replace the O-ring and restore that seal. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is put the rudder back in place and see if I have any play in it. I'll put the new O-ring in first and that'll give me a good idea of what condition this thing is in. If it's not in bad condition, I see no reason to replace it. Okay, so here she is. Inserted into the top bearing with the new uh, new O-ring. And dude, that is solid. There's absolutely no reason to replace this part. Uh, the O-ring was the only thing that needed replacement. So there we go. That's good. That saves me a little bit of time and effort. So now I gotta drop it and uh, set the lower bearing in place. And I'll let that sit overnight. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that today. And then that'll be, that'll conclude my day. If I get that lower bearing set, it'll be a really big achievement for this week. Let's mix some epoxy and set a bearing. Hells yeah. All right, let's do it. So all we gotta do is shove the rudder up there. Mixing up the epoxy primer now, so I'm using a Seahawk product. It's a 
Seahawk Tough Stuff. It's specifically to prevent blisters, right? So Premier Blister Protection. It's a two-part, uh, so the base and then the activator. Mix it together, and then you have like 30 minutes to, to paint. So uh, it's a one-to-one -one mix ratio. I've already measured it out. So here I am, I'm gonna mix the hell out of it for like a few minutes, and then we're gonna paint it on. I should be using a mechanical mixer, but I'm being lazy. <laughs> I'm being lazy by not going to get the mechanical mixer, but this seems to be a lot more work than just going to get the damn mixer. All right, that's pretty good. That's mixed up nicely. All right, I'm going to put this camera down and concentrate on getting this painted. So there it is. So let's go ahead and paint this with some bottom paint and then install the rudder. Finally, install the rudder. This is the bottom paint that I'm using. Again, the Seahawk product. It's a Q-coat anti-fouling by Seahawk. Yeah, really good stuff. We've used it before and uh, it lasted for like three years, four years. So we're gonna do it again. Three coats of Q-coat, Seahawk Q-coat. I'm gonna let this dry overnight and then tomorrow afternoon, this thing is gonna get installed in this boat. I'm gonna shove it up there, put the collar on and connect everything back up tomorrow. So there it is. Collar is on, the pin is in. This rudder is now secured to the boat. I need to put a cotter pin on this side. I'm gonna replace this cotter pin because it's it's old. Slide this pin through the hole. There it is. It lines up nicely. This guy goes on the back side. See the hole for the pin right here? So you can see that the pin on the post goes all the way through this thing, right? That pin is what ensures that the post spins when this guy rotates, right? And it gets clamped on there, right side up, just like so. All right, I'm gonna grab some tools to tighten this up. Okay, so that's good and tight. So there we go. And that's it. Everything looks really good on our steering system uh, components. So this steering system has no cables, no pulleys, none of that stuff. It's just a straight drive off of our uh, steering column. Uh, now that we've done the repair on the rudder itself, the bearings are nice and tight. The rudder is really secure. It doesn't move at all. It's perfect. Uh, that should last uh, for a good long time, probably longer than we're going to own this boat. The next step is to reinstall the autopilot arm. So I'm going to connect this dude back onto the top of the rudder. Turn it this way, line up the holes, just like so. Uh, put the bolts in and tighten her down. We've got washers. All right, rudder is installed. Oh, oh, I forgot one thing. I gotta put the cotter pin on that pin. Yeah. There it is. All right. Done. Nice. Okay, so that dude's all put back together. Uh, so that is a project complete. Wow, what a big project that was. So it's really good to have that done. So sweet. Let's go see what it looks like down below. It's the most secure this thing's been in a long time. So all I've got left to do on this thing, aside from paint it, get it painted, I do have to shape the opposite side of the rudder. All right, so if you look at the shape of it, I gotta fill in this side. So I'm probably gonna grind the paint off today. And I've also got a small fiberglass chip right here that it has to get repaired. I stripped the paint off of this, off this side of the rudder yesterday. Man, I don't know how this rudder got so damaged, but it had spots just all over it. So I think I might've found, found the last one. So it's actually soft right in that, right in that little hole. I got this dude, every day. 
comes visit me. I see that lizard every single day. I've just cleaned it with acetone and I've got all of my supplies over here. Still using the West System epoxy. It's a really great product. It's easy to use. I'm gonna use 404 filler. Get to a point where I need to start sanding. I'm gonna use 407, low density fairing filler. Easier to sand, really hard to sand. We'll get started right now. All right, so here it is. So you can see this mixture is like really, really thick, right? I better hurry up because it's a lot and it's gonna kick off pretty quickly. But I had to get it really, really thick. That way it would stick to the side of the rudder. Because the rudder is now vertical, it's no longer uh, laying flat. So I needed this stuff to be a really like thick, pasty kind of consistency. Just glob on there. take the grinder I'm gonna knock down all the like the rough edges like just these little rough edges like this it's kind of smooth them off best I can with a the grinder then I'm gonna refill using a, a softer lighter filler but it's definitely hard enough now be able to knock it down knock down all the edges with the grinder just get that shape started and the the reason I didn't put enough reason I didn't put a lot of this stuff on is because of how hard it is uh, I want the final surface to be with the lighter filler something I can sand and really get the shape right we're trying to achieve that and if you look at it it's starting to get there actually yeah, this one's still definitely wider, so I still need some filler on this side, but there she is. 